Hi, my name is Joanna. In this video, I would like to take you along on the journey of creating a small series of stoneware ghost sculptures. I'm using a smooth textured stoneware type. All products that I use will be listed in the description box below. So come along on this journey. It's always a good idea to beat the crap out of your clay before throwing or hand building as I'm gonna be doing in this video. To build a ghost it's a good idea to construct a skeleton mechanism one or two days before proceeding with your sculpture. This will lift your sculpture and keep it from basically collapsing and I know what this looks like. Uh, you can't avoid creating penises in, in pottery but you you have to sometimes to create a skeleton for your ghost. Um, and I'm gonna be creating the cloth by rolling a giant pancake shape. It's gonna be about three to six millimeters thick, no more, no less. I find it's the perfect thickness to work with. And as you can see, I'm just working in my home kitchen. I used to work in the local pottery uh, studio in town from where I live in Denmark uh, but during Covid it, it of course it closed down so now I'm just working in my kitchen and in my living room but for the sculpting part I find that the kitchen is perfect. Uh, your glaze work you should definitely keep out of your kitchen due to uh, hygiene reasons and also just basically not poisoning yourself. Now for the sculpting part, gently place the ghost sheet on the skeleton. You always have to keep the clay very damp to prevent early drying or cracking in the clay. And I like to just mist the clay with some water. For the sculpting part, it just it takes a lot of patience. Uh, it's a very timely process to create a balance and a nice uh, expression, let alone the details of the ghosts. Um, this might be the first time you've come across my work. And as I mentioned, my name is Joanna. I'm not at all a ceramist. I work as an illustrator and I studied uh, as an art historian. But when I was about eight years old, I knew I wanted to be an illustrator, painter, artist-ish, or a ceramist. I became an illustrator, but ceramics has always remained a big passion of mine. And these past couple of years, I've allowed it more room in my life. And I went to a local pottery studio. And yeah, now I'm also selling my ceramics, which is really awesome. For the next sculpting part, I'm gonna try to map in the face of the ghost and this goes along with what I said of creating the balance in a sculpture because you can't see the body or the arms or the legs but you can sense that there are arms, there are legs and there is a face underneath the sheet. Um, so you just gotta kind of map out the face with your fingers. Um, I don't have many tools really, a few sharp needle and scraping tools will get you far. You, you really just gotta work what you've got.
and now I'm sculpting the the flower bouquet. This ghost is going to be holding a flower bouquet. And for this part, it is definitely an advantage to have nifty, dainty little fingers like I've got. But if you have uh, giant fingers, you, you just got to use the tools and you'll be fine. You can use a bread knife or anything like that. Now you just gotta let the ghost dry for a couple of days. I wrap it up in some plastic and uh, that ensures it a slow drying process which will prevent uh, cracks in the clay. And then you gotta do the bisque fire and here we have the bisque fired ghosts. Now they are ready for the glaze process. I'm using mainly Mako glazes for every part of the ghosts, uh, but in the sheets I also like to mix in a little bit of Amaco Celadon White. It creates some very nice subtle effects in the sheets. Again, the glazing process is a very timely one and you just have to accept that this kind of precision work, it takes a lot of time, especially with glaze. It's not paint, it's more difficult to work with. To put things in perspective, creating this small batch of ghosts, it took a total of two months um, from start to finish. Uh, but again, I was just working on it about five to ten hours a week after work in the night time. When the glazing is done, it's time for the 1200 degrees Celsius fire to burn them for about 8 hours uh, and then I let the kiln cool down until the next day and then it's time to open up the kiln.
and I fired a few glaze fires and this is the second kiln I opened and now I'm just going to show you each and every ghost individually. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you would like to see more, please remember to subscribe.